morning, Juniper Level family, church, and community. We are so glad to have you tuned in with us on this morning. We have an exciting service ahead of us, so let's get ready for praise and worship. Hallelujah. Put your hands together. Everybody say bless, 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 say bless, 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 bless. Everybody say bless, 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 say bless, 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 bless. We're blessed, we're blessed, we're blessed, we're blessed in the city, yeah. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come and when we go. Sickness and poverty, devil is. We are. Everybody say bless, bless, say bless, say bless, say bless, bless, bless. Everybody say bless, 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 say bless, say bless, bless. We're blessed, we're blessed, we're blessed, yeah. We are. 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 We're blessed, blessed, we're 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 blessed,
Do you enjoy listening to good music? The African Children's Choir will return back to Juniper Level Missionary Baptist Church on Sunday, August the 9th at 6 o'clock p.m. We will have a concert held right outside the church. No worries, you can watch the concert from your car, social distance style, or pull up some lawn chairs and sit and enjoy the concert with your family. Back to school boot camp. That's right, it's starting this Monday, and we are ready to kick off our two week virtual boot camp to get our students ready to go back to school. For more information, please visit our Juniper website. Call in all couples. Let's adopt a highway. We will clean up Saul's Road on July 25th at 7 o'clock a.m. Meet us here, 9104 Saul's Road. That's it for our Juniper News. So let's get back to the praise and worship, followed by a dynamic word from our pastor, Jeffrey B. Robson. To God be the glory. I want to take this time and give a personal testimony about something that happened this week. I got a FaceTime from my wife. And when the screen came up, she was showing me the car which had been wrapped. Because a guy had T-boned them. A young guy was speeding down Glenwood and hit him. And I, a lady came, she picked me up from the scene. She picked me up and took me to the scene. But the whole time we were riding, she kept praying, praying and crying, praying and crying. She said, I don't know y'all, but I know it could have went the other way. And I, as I held hands with my son in the ambulance, the EMS guy looked at me. He said, you holding on like other people that get real shaken up and stuff like this. I said, but see, I know my God is everything. My God covers us through all situations. He always has and he always will. Say everything. Everything, everything. Say everything, yeah. Everything to me. Say life and death. Life and death. Everything to me. Yeah. Everything to me. You're my peace. Everything, everything. Say joy and sorrow. Joy and sorrow. Yeah. Hope for tomorrow. Everything to me. Say joy and sorrow. Everything to me. Hope for tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. You're my master, Lord, you're my savior, you're my ruler, and my redeemer, you're my provider, and when I'm down, you're my shelter, yeah. When I'm out, you're my healer. healer. Lord, you're my protector. Protected. Lord, you're our father. father. God, you're our father. Yeah. father. You're my father. father. To the fatherless, you're my father. father. Yeah. What's his name? Say Jesus. Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say Jesus. Jesus. Through it all, your name is Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're Jesus. Jesus. Like my grandma say, call his name. Say Jesus. Jesus. Call him. Call him. Yeah. Say, say, 
This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. For the Lord is good and he is worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, God is good. Well, we want to welcome you again as the praise and worship has just blessed us. We thank God for what God is doing. It's hard to believe that we're in the third Sunday of this month called July. Might you pray with me? Father, we thank you for life, for health, and strength. God, you've been right here by our side. The truth of the matter is, God, you made a way out of no way, and you continue to show yourself mighty and show yourself strong. We're thankful today, God, to be among the living and not the dead. We're thankful that you woke us up this morning and you started us on our way. We're thankful that God, you gave us what the saints of old would say, a portion of life, health, and strength. God, you kept us from all hurt, harm, and danger. And we just want to pause just to say thank you. We pray today, God, that you would get the glory, that you might be all that you need to be. And God, we pray for this country. We pray for President Trump, Governor Cooper. We pray for all pastors, for all churches. But God, we pray for Juniper Level. Have your way now. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I want to again welcome you to this service this morning. We are thankful to what God is doing. I want to get o go ahead and get into this word. There's a word that is bubbling over in my spirit. May I call your attention to Romans chapter 3 and beginning at verse number 23. Romans chapter 3 and beginning at verse 23. There down through verse 25. I'm using the message Bible, but whatever version you use will be fine. Since we've compiled this long and sorry record, as sinners, both us and them, and prove that we are utterly incapable of living the glorious lives God wills for us. God did it for us out of sheer generosity. He put us in the right standing with himself, a pure gift. He got us out of the mess we were in and restored us to where he always wanted us to be. And he did it by means of Jesus Christ. God sacrificed Jesus on the altar of the world to clear that world of sin. Having faith in him sets us in the clear. God decided on this course of action in full view of the public to set the world in the clear with himself through the sacrifice of Jesus. Finally, taking care of the sins he had so patiently endured. I want to talk for a few moments. That don't even need you to look at your neighbor because this is between you and God. 
Just say to yourself, I fell short. I fell short. Would you pray with me? Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you again that I can't preach, but you surely can. Speak Holy Spirit, that again, God, they will not hear from me, but hear directly from you. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us, that God, we might see you in a special way. And God, with all these things, is social injustice and COVID-19. God, we need to see you. We need to hear from you. The psalm writer says, if we don't hear from you, what would we do? So God, Holy Spirit, come on in now. Come with power and conviction. Save, heal, and deliver. We bind up anything that comes against your word, that comes against you today. In Jesus' name, thank you for the increase. Amen. I fell short. Have you ever fallen short? Have you ever, what I call, fell short on the ADVs, the aspirations, the dreams, and the visions? Have you ever fallen short on a job, on a career, on an education? on a relationship, on a marriage? Have you ever fallen short on something that was, you were so passionate about, but something happened? And truth of the matter is, what happened was, you fell short. And this sermon today is not really for those who have dotted every I and crossed every T, it is not for those who have never fallen short. It's not for those that have, have been so sanctified and so full of the Holy Spirit that you've not made a mistake. I'll get you next week. But this sermon this morning is for those who can honestly admit that I've felt fallen short. This sermon is for those who can admit that the truth of the matter is they would have been further down the road, but they fell short. This sermon is for those who can admit openly as well as privately that they started off with their aspirations, with their dreams, and with their visions. But life happened. And the truth of the matter is they failed. And they fell short. What do you do when you have all these aspirations and all of these dreams and all of these visions, but you fall short. Well, this sermon is really just for you because what happens when you fall short, I call them the pen. It means that when you fall short, there is pain, there is embarrassment, and there's numbness. Have you ever been there where it hurt so bad, you were so embarrassed that you became numb? And when you became so numb, you didn't know whether you were going or coming when you're falling short. The truth of the matter is we don't talk about it in church that often. We talk about how we've got it together. But God has called us this morning to talk about I've fallen short. Come, come with me to this text. Come with me to this pericope. Here we find that Paul sets us up. And he begins to set us up by saying, we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. On last watch, the sermon was very simply, there is no difference. Whatever you're addicted to, some addicted Overindulging in shopping, in eating, some fornication and adultery. But all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So he sets us up by simply saying that yes, we have fallen short. But I'm a shout today. My shout is found in verse 23 and 24 where he says, 
that God understood that we have messed up, but he has put us in right standing. If you don't get anything else out of this sermon today, you ought to shout there that I, even if you tried to dot every I and cross every T, the law, the Mosaic law would show you that you were nothing but a sinner. But the good news is that, that our sin has been nailed on the cross and though there is no difference, we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And that's what my shout is today about, is that although I fell short, God has straightened up my mess. Is there somebody that we can call time out that can say my life was a mess? Because that's why this, this sermon is not for those who ever, who's done everything right. But this sermon is really for those who's done a lot wrong. This sermon is for those who have messed up, have, have relationships and marriages and raising kids and messed up school and lost a lot of money and done some bad things. But yet and still, Paul writes in this pericope this morning, he says that yes, we have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But what he says in the text, here's the shout, is that God himself has straightened out our mess and has nailed it on a cross and has sacrificed his only son by the name of Jesus. Well, I can go on out of here today because the truth of the matter is, that's why we still exist. That's why there's still hope. That's why when we have the pain, the pain, the embarrassment, and the numbness, that's why we can shout the day that even, although we fallen short. Although I fell short, God is able to clean up my mess. God is able to take me from where I was. God is able to take me from being homeless. God is able to take me from being a drug addict. God is able to take me from all the dirty, nasty, dark places that I've been. God is able to use me. Although I've had pains, embarrassment, and numbness, God himself is able to straighten out my mess. That's why I'm here this morning to talk to somebody who may find themselves in a place where you got a lot of pain, you got, you've been embarrassed, and you're numb. But come, come with me because I got something for you because I need to tell you, first of all, that this, this falling short is necessary. Look at your neighbor and say, it's necessary, it's necessary. And they, you might, they may ask you, why is it necessary? Let me tell you why it's necessary to fall short. The, way, the first reason why is that if you hadn't fallen short, it would make you perfect. Falling short then shows us that we need God. Falling short shows us that without him, we would fail. Falling short, like the Bible study on this past week on John chapter 3, where John, when the boys tries to pit Jesus against John, the Bible says that what John says, no, sir, there's nothing can be done by without God. Lord, have mercy here today. And here's what I'm trying to say to somebody that I had to fall short. Touch your neighbor say, I had to fall short. But not only did I need to fall short, to show me that I wasn't perfect. I had to fall short to show you that I needed God because if I thought I had gotten there by my own bootstraps, if I thought I could make it by myself, then I would need God. There's somebody ought to stop there and shout for a moment that because I fell short then, I understood that I couldn't make it by myself because I fell short, my marriage fell short, raising kids fell short, my education fell short, doing the things I wanted to do fell short. But I thank God that in the midst of all of my falling short, God has straightened up my mess. His text says then, he says that God has straightened it up. God has fixed and resolved our mess. God has came in and helped us. Well, let me get on out of here and show you that even those who you least expect to fall has fallen. There's a man by the name of Abraham. You remember Abraham, don't you? Abraham, who is called the father of faith. Abraham, the one in Genesis chapter 12, 
where God calls him. He's Abram then. And he tells him to leave his country and that God will bless him and God will, he could look at the stars and count the stars and, 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 and that's what would come out of his lineage. Abraham did some things and he messed up in Genesis 12. But I want to bring you to Genesis 20. Genesis 20, if you were reading what I'm reading, is this father of faith found himself in Genesis 20 leaving from one place and he gets to a place where the king is named Abimelech. Abimelech name means my father is king. He gets there, if you're following me, in Genesis 20 and he has a wife. Now, in Genesis 12, he messed up and lied, the father of faith. Mm -hmm. He lied because Sarah, around 65, was so fine, y'all better help me here, that, that he feared, I'm going to walk this text, that they would kill him to marry his wife. And so what he did, does in Genesis 12, when he goes over to Egypt, he says, you're going to be my sister and not my wife. Well, God had to intervene like he did, does in this text this morning and had to set it straight and release Sarah from this situation. But Genesis 20, here's Abraham now again. Abraham, they goes to Gerar. And while they are there, he goes through this again. And he says, first of all, she's my sister. Well, around verse 3, the Bible says that King Abimelech takes her. Now, this is 25 years later, somewhere approximately 25, because when they go into Egypt, she's 65. Now, she's about 90 years old. Can I stop there, brothers, and tell you, Sarah had to be fine. Because if, 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 if the guys are stopping at 90, she's 90 years old, and, and, and she's so fine that Abraham got to worry about her, Lord have mercy. She, I, 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 she, she's beyond the level of fine. And so the word says, let me get back here to church. The word says then that he lies, but God, come with me. Here's how God straightened it out, y'all. God goes to King Abimelech and said, King Abimelech, in a dream, you're a dead man. King Abimelech says, what do you mean, God, I'm a dead man? He says, you're a dead man because you have a marriage man wife in your court. And King Abimelech says, sir, what have I done, God, because I, they pretended, they told me that was his sister. She even admitted that she was his, his sister and I didn't, I haven't touched her. And God says, you said it right, King Abimelech. The reason why you didn't touch her is because I intervened. Can I stop there and tell somebody today, that's why I like God. That's why I can serve God. That's why sometimes even when I mess up, God intervenes in my mess up and blocks stuff. God have mercy. There's a songwriter that says, and he blocked it. God blocked it. So in this, God says, King Abimelech, I blocked it. You wanted to touch her, but I stopped it. Can I shout here today and tell somebody that God will block stuff that's in your path? Even when you mess up, God has the ability to block some stuff and cause you not to receive what you ought to receive. He will cause you not to get what you, are, what you deserve. Is there a shout out there? Is there anybody that can shout this morning that I didn't get what I deserve? Lord have mercy. That's me. If there's nobody else, I, I, I should have been caught. I, I, I should have been dead. I should have been out there. But thanks be to God that he blocked it. Lord have mercy. Is there anybody can just shout where you're at that he blocked it? He, he blocked it. He blocked the bullet. He, he blocked the arrest. He blocked my situation. He blocked my the knife. He blocked the bullet. Y'all better help me here. He blocked my situation. I thank God that he blocked it. And so the Bible says in Genesis 20 that God says, if you don't let her go, 
Ah, you are a dead man. But not only are you dead, your whole household is dead. Early in the morning, the Bible says when King Abimelech gets up, he says, oh, Lord, he reminds and tells his household, look, we got to get Sarah out of here. That means it tells somebody, I don't want to miss this point. I need to tell somebody that in the midst of all of this, God can deliver you even when you find yourself in the darkest hour, even when you find yourself with pain, pain, embarrassment, and numbness, God is able to deliver you. The Bible says that King Abimelech says, hey, Sarah, what have you done? I didn't deserve this. And when he gets to Abraham, he said, Abraham, get her out of here in fact but not only get her out of here but one thing is is that I'm gonna bless you not only am I gonna bless you because here's a shout y'all ready for a shout here's a shout because I'm in point number one here's a shout I fell short with my faith have you been there because if you look at Abraham's story Abraham was in the midst of chapters mm, Lord have mercy I hear you God what do you mean, Mr. Chapter? In the middle of chapters. In chapter 18 of Genesis, God had already sent angels and had promised him, although Sarah laughed at it, promised him that he was going to have a son. Lord have mercy. Through Sarah. Sometimes before you get your blessings, you are in the midst, in the middle of chapters of your life. Be very careful when you're in the middle of the chapters of your life that you don't mess it up. Look at your neighbor and say, don't mess it up. Because if the truth of the matter is, Abraham and Sarah was about to mess it up. God had already promised. And if he had been faithful, Lord have mercy, he fell short in his faith because if he had the same faith that caused him to leave with her, when God says to leave, he ought to still had faith to say in Genesis 12, when I lied the first time, God delivered me. If he did it before, why can't he do it again? Can I shout and tell somebody that I fell short in my faith? But don't look at Abraham. Don't look at here at me. You ought to look at yourself because the truth of the matter is all of us have fallen short with our faith. God says you can have it, but we got a little nervous. That's my, my point number two is that not only did he fall short in his faith, he fell short with fears. You do realize that one of the greatest weapons that the devil uses is fear. Abraham was scared with the Egyptian, and he's still scared with King Abimelech. His fear is, y'all better help me here, his fear is the fact that they, he thinks that they want his wife so bad, that so bad now that they will kill him for her. And yet it's still, if you're, in, you're not very careful, because as I get older, I talk to myself, and I'm not crazy. But yes, I talk to myself. In fact, not only do I talk to myself, I answer back. And, and, and don't look up here at me, but I talk to myself. Yes, your pastor is not crazy, but I talk to myself. And the older I get, I talk, I answer. I talk, I answer. And I can imagine that if you're not very careful, you will talk to yourself and talk yourself out of the chapters that God has already promised you. You will talk yourself and let the fears of life stop you, prevent you from moving out on the faith that God has given you. I don't know who I'm talking to today who have ADV, aspiration, dreams, and visions, and God showed you the plan. You had it all written out. You had your business plan. You had everything right. You had it all fixed. You, ran, you had a bump in the middle of the road, and now it's all in the attic. It's in the garage. It's in the closet, and God says still that I'm still God, but your fears have now stopped you and prevented you from doing what God told you to do. What do you do when you're scared, shaking in your boots, and now you have to lie, Lord have mercy, in order for you to move forward? Can I tell you, like the, the old folks used to say, if you lie, you'll steal. If you steal, you'll do anything. What I'm trying to say to somebody in here today is very simply, I need to tell somebody today that, that I fell short. Look at your neighbor and say, I fell short. I I fell short with my faith. I fell short with my fears. 
And here's where he fell short, and I'm almost finished. He fell short on his focus because he was more focused on Sarah than he was focused on God. Can I talk to somebody in here today and let them know today you better be careful what has your focus. Because if you're not very careful, your focus will be on it instead of your focus being on God. Have you ever been there? That my focus was more on what I saw in my, with my eyes instead of what I saw in my faith. Ah, preaching here, Robinson. My focus was more on what I saw in the natural than what God revealed to me in the spiritual. If you are not very careful, you'll be too close to something. What, Lord have mercy. Can I ask you a question? What are you so close to that you are scared of losing? Ah, because if you're not very careful, You'll be so scared of losing it. That's the problem in the text. That's the problem with many of us, that we're so scared to lose something that we're, we're willing to lie. We're willing to fall short of our faith. We'll, let it use, we'll let, allow our fears to rule us, and we lose focus. So what do you do when you fall short? In your faith, what do you do when you fall short? In your fears, what do you do when you fall short in your focus? Can I show you? And I I'll, I'll promise I'll leave you alone because I'm shouting already. I'm shouting because Romans 3 says that God will fix our mess. Here's what God really tells him. He tells Abimelech, not only does he tell him he's a dead man, he also shares with Abimelech that Abraham is a prophet. That's a shout. You missed it. <laughs> Somebody says, what did I miss? You missed a shout that even a prophet can mess up. What you missed was that God says that he's still a prophet. Can I shout somebody? I, I, I think you still missed a shout. You missed the moment where you ought to have shouted. Because if it was left up to others, they would have been caught up with your lie. But because he that has begun a good work in you understood that you are not perfect, but he was already cleaning up your mess. You were lying, but he was cleaning up your mess. Have you ever had to clean up somebody's Mess. It stinks. Doesn't smell good. Having three kids. I'm an expert in cleaning up folks' mess. As a daddy, I probably changed more diapers than Renee. If she was here to be here, she would testify. She was all right with changing number one, but she had some problems on number two. She has some problems on number two because number two is messy. Number two stinks. Number two has an odor about it. But here's what God does. He specializes in mess. In fact, truth of the matter is, I got so good at it, I didn't need as a whole bucket of wipes. I knew how to wipe and get them clean. The truth of the matter is, that's what God has learned. And he really didn't have to learn it. But that's what God does. We mess up, and God cleans up. We fall short with our faith, with our fears, and with our focus. But here's what he says. Although you messed up, you're still a prophet. I don't know who I'm talking to, because the world has given up on you. But God says, you're still a prophet. I want you to get that, what I just said. I'm slowing it down for you. You messed up, but God has cleansed what you messed up. 
And he still says that though you messed up, it still does not negate what I call you. Oh, God have mercy. That's another shout. But I'll do it upstairs. Because maybe, just maybe, just maybe I'm the only one that can be honest that I fell short. But what he says is, that still does not stop me from giving you an assignment. I know you messed up, but I still called you. Before I formed you, I knew you. In fact, truth of the matter is, I'm finna mess with you now, and I'm gonna get on out of here. I had, Abraham had to fall short. Can I bless you? Because up until Abraham lying, and falling short, there was a stoppage in Abimelech's house. But what God says, Abimelech, if you let Sarah go, if you bless her, if you bless Abraham, Abimelech says to Sarah, I gave him a thousand pieces of silver. But God says, if you let him go, He'll pray for your house, and you're going to be blessed. So can I tell somebody, it's a setup that God is trying to help us to see today that even when we mess up, God is ready to bless us. And so the text says that when Abraham prayed for Abimelech, that Abimelech house, God bless. So as I get ready to leave somebody, I want to tell somebody, that whoremonger, that prostitute, that adulterer, that fornicator, that dope smoker, that out in the street person, you can't run from God. And what God says, is that I still called you. And though you messed up, I've already cleansed it at a cross called Calvary. I've already straightened it out before you were even born. Romans 5 says, when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Can I shout <laughs> in my own shout <laughs> and tell somebody, I thank God for dying for me. But not only did Abraham mess up with his faith, with his fears, and with his focus. Robinson, go and take us home. Right before Jesus died, there was another man by the name of Peter. Y'all remember Peter. I like Peter because Peter reminds me of me. Whatever came up, came out. Peter was straight from the hood. Peter would cut you. Peter would cuss you. <laughs> but Peter was a coward. And the Bible says that this same Peter says to Jesus, Jesus, I'll go with you wherever you go. But you know the story that Jesus says, Peter, Satan wanted to sift you as wheat, but I prayed for you that when thou art converted, thou would strengthen your brother. That's your shout, <laughs> that you may not be what you ought to be but I gave you a shout that God has already prepared for you to mess up you know what the story goes that they trapped Jesus that Judas kissed him and Jesus goes through some monkey courts and they ask Peter are you not one of them Peter first denied then Peter started warming by the wrong fire. After a while, Peter started cussing, said, I don't know him. 
And then at the end, uh, the third time of denial, Peter crow crowed, and Jesus looked down, and he sees Peter. But I brought some good news. There's some other Pete's out there. Messed up the first time. Messed up the second time. Messed up the third time. Denied Christ. Started cussing. Doing what God told you not to do. But I got some good news. As I get ready to go upstairs. Jesus died on a cross called Calvary. Jesus stayed in a grave for three days. But on the day Jesus gets up, he, 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 he gets up out of the grave. The stone was rolled away. The women come see Jesus. They wanted to finish what they started. But the grave was empty. The angel says, whoever you're looking for, he's not here. But I could see the women running back and they see Peter and John. And they say, Peter, guess what? We looked in the grave and the grave was empty. Peter and John start running to the grave. When Peter and John gets to the sepulchre, John looks in, but when Peter sees it, he goes on inside. He sees the napkin, what was on Jesus' face. He sees it folded, and Peter realized that what Jesus says, if you tear down this temple in three days, I'll build it up again. Here's Peter's shout. Here's my shout. I once was down, but now I see in the middle of falling short, God is able to pick me up. I, I, I know I've been there. I've fallen short. I, I, I've been there where I had nothing but pain, nothing but embarrassment. I was numb all over. But one day I met Jesus for myself. I, I, I know what he's able to do. He took my pen. He took my pain. He put my embarrassment. He took my numbness. And he turned it around. In fact, I don't look like what I've been through. In fact, if you only look back from which I've come, you would know I was a liar. You would know how much sins I did. But thank you, Jesus, what you did on Calvary. You took my sins on the cross and you died for me. I thank God that I fell short, but when I was short, you were long. When I was weak, you were strong. I thank God. Didn't he do it? Didn't he do it? Where my folks at that are not ashamed of the gospel of Christ? Where my folks at that had some pains, were embarrassed, and you were numb, but touch your body and said that used to be me. But now I got joy on the inside. This joy that I have, I fell short, but when I fell short, he picked me up, he lead me, he guide me, he order my steps. I thank God when I fell short, he
saved me. That's my shout. Excuse me for a moment. Excuse me for a moment. That's my shout. Usually I do it in private, but excuse me this morning. That's my shout that I'm none deserving. I'm a sinner saved by grace. And the good news today is that Jesus has come to set the captive free. Pain had me. Embarrassment had me. I was so embarrassed. Then you used to be married. Where your kids at? Are you still in that relationship? Did you finish your education? It caused me to avoid. But now, that's not my story. I fell short, but he picked me up. Father, in the name of Jesus, as you pick me up, pick them up this morning. Help them through their pains, their embarrassment, and their numbness. Save them today, God. In the name of Jesus, as you did it for me, do it for them. Thank you for the increase in Jesus' name. I hope that you are able to help us today, but mainly you are able to help yourself. From Romans 10 and 9, that thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. And believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. Call us. My name is Jeff Robinson. And I have the awesome pleasure of serving as a senior pastor here at Juniper Level Missionary Baptist Church. Call us. 919-779-6401. Hit us up on Facebook. Follow us on YouTube channel. Go out and follow us on Pastor Rob 9104. For truly, this is the day that the Lord has made. To God be.